It has come to my attention that too many people consider an orc to be some kind of six-foot, green-skinned, black-haired, noble savage Adonis with the chiseled body of a Greek god. This needs to stop. I want everyone to take all their shiny, oiled-up, pride parade, beach body ready orcs and quietly remove themselves from all fantasy. I am hereby making Warcraft orcs illegal from this point onward and making the infinitely superior pig orc mandatory. I am, I am not even going to mention half orcs. Half orcs are also illegal. Straight to jail. Fear not though, as I am a merciful and very cute DM. Muscular, green-skinned men and women will still exist as hobgoblins. I can only hope this makes their underplayed and unwanted race finally popular and relevant. Trolls and goblins may also remain green as well, as there is no wrong way to really do them. But that is another video. No, but seriously, I love pig orcs. I think pig orcs are the perfect depiction of orc, and I think they encapsulate the definitive orc experience, both physical and spiritual. A close second would be the Warhammer orc, which goes without saying is the green skin exception, and is an utterly flawless depiction of orkiness. For those who are unfamiliar with the dichotomy of green orc versus pig orc, allow me a moment to explain the brief history between the two, and why in the West we have to have this talk, but in Japan they're years ahead of us. In the interest of satisfying the YouTube AI overmind, I will of course refrain from making this too educational. Okay, so, sometime around 1970, Gary Gygax and several of his friends, including Dave Arneson, were all transported to a fantastical world where they proceeded to have astounding isekai adventures until they finally returned to Earth in 1973. Now, in order to cope with the severe trauma they had developed from years of adventuring, they made the game we know as Dungeons and Dragons, an anthology of the world they explored, people they met, and the horrors they fought disguised as an innocent tabletop game. Some of this is true. Then, in 1977, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons was released, along with three books, The Dungeon Master's Guide, Player's Handbook, and The Monster Manual. The Monster Manual depicted the first canon D&D illustration of an orc as a pig-faced humanoid. The seemingly innocent depiction of a pig orc wouldn't return in the later versions of D&D, and most likely would have been driven into obscurity if it weren't for the 1981 Apple game Wizardry, Proving Grounds of the Mad Overlord. <laughs> This game took heavy inspiration from the Dungeons & Dragons tabletop game, and that included copying wholesale two things, pig orcs and dog kobolds. Yes, this is where the Japanese get dog kobolds from too. Feel free to cite this in your game theories. Apparently dog kobolds were caused by a mistranslation concerning kobolds being described as a dog-faced monster, but I digress. Wizardry released two other games before the original was finally ported to the Super Famicom, that's the SNES for all us Occidental heathens, in Japan in 1985. The Japanese then proceeded to like Wizardry so damn much that they made their own fantasy role-playing games inspired by it, such as Final Fantasy and an obscure little game called A Dragon Quest. Famitsu rated Wizardry Japan's 66th most popular game out of 100, and one of the four Western games that actually made it onto that list. Dragon Quest got pig orcs from Wizardry, and for the most part Dragon Quest has, and continues to, define what Japan knows as an orc. That's right all you smelly weeaboo simps. <laughs> Why am I being so mean? All your favorite Japanese RPGs wouldn't be possible if it weren't for a Western game made for the Macintosh Apple computer. Back in America, our current orcish zeitgeist has been largely defined by the Pulp Fiction troglodytes of Frank Frazetta, little bit of the Warhammer Green Fungal Orc, and eventually culminating in the 1994 green Warcraft orcs we know and cherish today. That's a super redacted version of the story, but I'm not game theory, nor am I monetized. 
So I hope that satisfies your curiosity warts of pointless media trivia. Enough of this nonsense, though. Let's get down to some serious orky business. Pig orcs to me, and to you, hopefully, please, are the definitive orc. They are everything an orc should be. They have all the qualities one should emulate and aspire to have or see in an orc. And this is why I am such a massive advocate for them. The pig orc simply combines all the worst characteristics of man and pig to produce a singularly perfect orc. The pig orc is gluttonous, wasteful, and entitled. The pig orc is never satisfied with anything and is constantly looking for more food, more money, more booze, more sex, and more fights. The pig orc is unwise, inconsiderate, stubborn, and impulsive. The pig orc accounts for no needs besides its own, and makes no attempt at complicated or lengthy schemes. Every problem is a nail that can be hammered down. The pig orc is strong, industrious, cunning, and thrives in filth. For all their faults, the pig orc is a definitive master of mud, and skilled at tunneling, mining, with a particular passion for working with gnarly metal tools and hideous smoking machines of industry and war. They're the sort of creature that keeps their deformed children so they can turn them into cringing slaves, and values invalids only insofar as their ability to give them bladed prosthetic limbs. If anything else, the pig orc is also unnatural, the product of some cruel ancient curse inflicted on a punished people, or a foul creation dredged up in a bubbling black cauldron of horrid power. This is important to the mindset of the pig orc, as it is a being that is constantly trying to justify its existence. Overall, when your players encounter orcs, they shouldn't see some big, green, Conan barbarian who's come to rape and pillage them in no particular order, and look stunning while doing so. They should see a desperate, tired, and feral creature who's been beaten and broken down both physically and mentally for their entire life, becoming just as much a victim as they are a predator. The kind of creature that's so desperate for success and to experience as much as life will give them, because they have nothing left to lose and everything to gain from knowing little else but filth and misery. Ironically, with this in mind, I feel pig orcs are better at maintaining an identity that is truer to what Tolkien had in mind with orcs than whatever the hell Warcraft or D&D is doing with them right now. I mean, if that sort of thing is important to you, it isn't to me. I, I just like pig orcs. <laughs> Funny man with hog head go wee! Because in my eyes, and officially for the record, Darkest Dungeon Swine are more orky than Blizzard's orcs. Easily. If this all sounds a little melodramatic, have no fear. Pig orcs easily and beautifully translate over into more whimsical or even goofy settings. Like, they are, after all, just goofy men and women with silly pig heads. So you're free to make them as serious as you personally want them to be. The Legend of Zelda went this route with their moblins and bababblins, after all. Pig Ganon, you know how it is. As a matter of fact, you have my explicit permission to do whatever you want with your pig orcs, so long as you just use pig orcs, because they're simply the best kind of orc, and so any representation is automatically valid. Why, you could even make them green if you wanted to. Personally, my favorite orc colors are red, black, and blue, but you do you. While we're on our way out, and in the interest of stimulating the almighty YouTube algorithm, why not let me know what your favorite color of orc is down in the comments section below? 